we've seen that to solve our micro matching model, um, we need to, you know, if we want to solve it graphically, we can plot the aggregate supply, plot the aggregate demand, find the intersection of the uh, aggregate supply, aggregate demand, and that would give us the market tightness that solves the uh, model as well as the amount of output in the model. And of course, from that tightness, we can back out all the other variables uh, in the model. So the last question I want to discuss is, what does it mean if the realized tightness is not the tightness that solves the model? You know, how can we interpret this? Um, and just what's the meaning of it? You know, in the same way that in Valrasian model, if the market clears, you know, the price is given at the intersection of supply and demand. But then, you know, once, but it's also possible uh, that the price is not the market clearing price. Um, if you have some say price rigidities, and and then you know we can look at what the meaning of that is and the type of you know uh, rationing that there may be and the type of kind of disequilibrium that may happen. Um, so it's something we discussed uh, and that was discussed a lot in the disequilibrium literature uh, when we have you know you can have excess supply, excess demand if your price is not at the market paying level. Um, so all of this is very clear now in a model such as our matching model, when tightness is not the tightness that <coughs> solves the model, the interpretation is a little bit different and it's important to understand uh, what it means. Um, so <coughs> what, we had, uh, what we had seen is that if we want to uh, solve our matching model, so we can put market tightness X, the vertical axis, so we can also have so we can have x on the vertical axis, I'll put y on the horizontal axis. We can put the productive capacity k here. Here we have zero. We have the aggregate supply. It's going to look something like this. And we'll have the aggregate demand. It's going to be so. Here we said, you know, in a world with a you know a fixed price, we can show for sure that the aggregate demand is going to be uh, downward sloping. Uh, so you know, let's look at this. But you know, generally it'll be downward sloping. So here I'm showing it downward sloping. <clears throat> then we know that the tightness uh, that solve. The model is given at the intersection here. We can call it X, and then this is the output. <clears throat> Another question is like, what would it mean to have uh, a tightness, for instance, that's here? X hat. Uh, how, you know, what would happen in a model in which you realize? Tightness was x at what would have to give. So obviously, it's not possible that all the equations of the model are satisfied uh, because if they were, we would be at x. It's not possible that all the you know assumptions that we make about how the model works are satisfied, so we would be at x. But uh, what's the interpretation of having a tightness that would be x hat? Well, so first thing we know is that in <clears throat> in the model, um, you know the household supply k. The matching function always works, so we're always on the aggregate supply. So if the realized tightness was x hat, we know that the output would be given by the aggregate supply here. And that would have an output y hat in such a model. Okay, well, that's pretty simple. Now the key thing that, as you can see, at x hat, the AD curve yd is strictly less than the AS curve ys. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, the first thing that it means is you realize that, um, you, if you remember when we studied the model, so to solve the model, we use an aggregate demand, aggregate supply curve. This is nice because the aggregate demand curve captures all the demand side factor, aggregate supply captures all the aggregate, uh, supply side factors. Um, but the, actually, the amount of output that's demanded by households is not just purely the aggregate demand curve. We said that uh, the amount of output that was demanded was, which we had called YB for the behavior, was uh, actually a, a combination, a linear combination of YD and YS. So, in fact, 
And of course, when these two are the same, it's the same. So in fact, maybe the amount of output So why, why B of X looks something like this? It's always between supply and demand. And of course, when supply and demand are equal, this is the same. So why B of X, you remember, was sigma Y S plus one minus sigma uh, Y D. And this is output. demanded by households if they anticipate the tightness of x okay and so here what we can see is that at x hat therefore the amount uh, the amount of output that would, would be demanded is much less than the amount of output that actually traded Okay, so here in a world like this, if household anticipated exat, they would have demanded yb of exat here, and uh, and that's strictly less than y hat. So this is yb of x hat. Okay, uh, so it means that household anticipated X ads, they would have had like to buy YB of X ads. They've posted, a num you know, or they'll, they'll do a number of visits that uh, is consistent with YB of X ads, but actually they are going to get Y hat instead of YB of, of X ads. Uh, and so why would that happen? Um, well, that can only happen is because uh, household have misperceived misanticipated uh, the tightness that uh, was going to be prevalent on the market. That's the only way that uh, YB of X hat and Y hat are not the same. You know, because if household had anticipated correctly tightness and uh, you know had maximized their utility, we would be at X. All the all the everything would be satisfied. Here's the fact that we're not at X and we're at instead at X hat means that the thing that must give is that household that actually miss uh, anticipated the tightness that would be on the market. Um, and so that could be easier, you know, if we do the statistical agency and uh, interpretation, like the statistical agency announced a wrong tightness and as a result, a tightness such that supply was not equal to demand and as a result, the tightness that they announced is not the one that realized. Um, therefore, we have a gap. Um, or it could be that household just you know misunderstood what was going on. If there is no statistical agency, they mispredict tightness, and so they you know they they anticipate a certain tightness, and uh, but at the end that's not what we realize, and, and as a result, the, you know the output that we realize is not the one that at that tightness they would have liked. Uh, so that's quite costly for the household because if the realized tightness is x hat the amount of tightness they, they are, of output they want is YB of X hat. And so if we plot, like, say, welfare here, you know, at X hat, the welfare looks something like this. You know, it's maximized here, and then it's decreasing. Because you know that uh, the uh, utility function for households and the the doesn't depend on tightness, but the budget constraint involves tightness. And for a given tightness x hat, the best that household can do is to actually consume yb of x hat. And the fact that in fact here they consume y hat tells you that uh, there is a utility loss uh, So here household actually they are suffering from the fact that uh, you know, having to consume Y hat is costly to them because that's not the best they could have done at X hat, okay? Uh, so this is telling us, for instance, that if the statistical agency announces a tightness that's not such a supply equal demand, the realized tightness will, um, will be different than what was anticipated. And, uh, and as a result, you, you will have a utility loss for households. Um, so that's going to be costly. And similarly, so mistakes are costly for household mistakes in predicting tightness because at the end, uh, 
at the end, you know, they don't do the best they can uh, because the tightness that's anticipated is not the one that's realized. Um, 